Back in October, I did my first conversion of a standard two bin worm bin setup to a flow through system. When I did the conversion, I had a couple goals in mind. First, I wanted to increase the airflow in the system to ensure that beneficial aerobic bacteria remain dominant. Though a standard two bin Rubbermaid setup has drainage holes that allow leachate to drain from the upper into the lower bin, the holes can get clogged with castings, resulting in excess moisture and limited airflow in the upper bin, especially at the bottom of the upper bin. This moist, relatively low oxygen environment can result in anaerobic bacteria becoming dominant, instead of aerobic. Second, I wanted to make harvesting worm castings easier. Harvesting castings is one of the few garden chores that I really don't enjoy. And I knew from experience that harvesting castings from my worm-in flow-through system was much easier than harvesting from my tube-in systems. For the purpose of this video, I'll very briefly touch on the design of the flow-through bins. If you'd like to learn more about the design and conversion, please see the link at the end of this video or in the description below. Starting with a standard two-bin Rubbermaid setup, I cut a hole in the bottom of the upper bin I also cut a hole in the front of the bottom bin to allow castings to be harvested. A few inches above this hole, I ran half-inch PVC pipes through the bin. These pipes act as a shelf to hold the upper bin in place and also allow access to the castings. Before adding food and bedding to the bin, I placed two paper bags in the bottom of the upper bin to hold the material in place. Now that the bins have been in use for three months, it's time to harvest castings and evaluate if these two goals have been met. Now to address the first of my goals, to increase airflow and ensure beneficial aerobic bacteria remain dominant. This system not only has air holes drilled in the lid and around the top of the bin, it is also open on the bottom, allowing for significantly more oxygen in the system. In addition, the open bottom prevents the excess moisture buildup that is common in standard two bin setups. As a result, the conditions in the bin should be more conducive to beneficial aerobic bacteria. Short of sending the castings to a lab for analysis, I use the smell test to judge the quality of the castings. These castings smell pleasant and earthy, which tells me beneficial aerobic bacteria are likely dominant. One of the great things about a flow-through system is that it takes advantage of the composting worm's natural tendencies to stay fairly close to the surface and to go where the food is. So as you add food and bedding to the top of the bin, the worms migrate upward, leaving their castings below. Of course there will be some worms that remain at the bottom, but most will be near the top. To harvest castings, I ran my fingers between the PVC pipes and let the castings fall in the collection area below. I stopped harvesting from the bin when I started encountering unprocessed food and bedding. Just as I had hoped, there were very few worms in the harvested castings and very little unprocessed food and bedding as well. I quickly realized that to avoid making a mess, I would need to set the bin on the floor or a large workbench in order to remove the castings from the bottom bin. So I placed the bin on the floor with a large heavy duty garbage bag in front and pulled the castings onto the bag. Alternatively, I could have placed a container in the harvesting area and scraped the castings into the container. I then removed a small amount of unprocessed material, mostly twigs, and quickly returned some worms back to the bin. I wrapped the garbage bag around the castings, picked them up, and poured them into a six gallon bucket. I repeated this process with two more bins and filled my six gallon bucket with castings in about 45 minutes. Considering the hours I used to spend separating worms and unprocessed food and bedding from castings, this is a huge improvement. I'm very happy that I converted my worm bins over to flow-through bins. The open bottom design and increased airflow result in higher quality castings. I also find the castings much easier to harvest, which is a big plus for me. There are a couple of concerns you may want to consider if you are thinking of converting your bins. The increased airflow and open bottom prevent unwanted moisture buildup, which is great. However, I did find that sometimes I had to add additional water to the bins to ensure sufficient moisture. This doesn't really concern me, but it's something to be aware of, especially if you live in an arid climate where this may be more of a concern. 
In addition, the increased airflow also results in much less leachate or worm tea being produced. And the little bit of leachate that does drip down to the bottom bin can evaporate fairly quickly. It's also difficult to harvest worm tea from the system. This doesn't really concern me because I much prefer actively aerated vermicompost tea over the leachate. But it's something to consider if you like using worm tea in your garden. If you'd like to learn more about how I converted my standard two-bin rubber-made systems into flow-through systems, please see the link at the end of this video or in the description below. Also, please feel free to ask any questions you may have. I try to respond to all questions. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.